So, this is going to be great. <laughs> We're going to kill some golden calves. <laughs> Might make some folks uncomfortable, but that's okay. I truly believe in many of our churches we're making the environments so comfortable for people that now God's not comfortable. We're making environments so comfortable for people that now God is not comfortable. And so we're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I tried to do that last Sunday and just ended up demonstrating them. And so what I'm going to try to do up front is teach on them and then we'll begin to flow in the Holy Spirit and see what God wants to do in our midst here. I believe uh, one of the effects of prophesying and stirring up the gifts of the Holy Spirit is that it creates healthy hunger and expectation in believers to hear from God and to discover all that He has done for us. So if I had a title for this message, it would just simply be called Welcoming the Holy Spirit in the 21st Century. Would you grab the hand of the person next to you? Father, we thank You for this morning. We thank You that no one is here by mistake. That you drew every person into this building that you wanted here. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you would reveal truth to us. That you would trim away anything that doesn't need to be in our spirits, and our souls, in our bodies. And that you would add to us, Father. That you would add and that you would multiply the work of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I believe that the answer for a compromised world is a burning hot church. So, Lord, turn up the temperature in here. Yes. Yes. Make it real hot. Yes. Lord, we won't, don't want to tone down our hunger for those less hungry. Yes. Lord, we don't want to hide our light under a bushel in case we don't offend somebody. Lord, we just say, let your light shine. Yes. Let your Holy Spirit come and have His way. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. amen. Yeah. All right, if you have your Bibles, would you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, again, I want to teach a little bit on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what they are, how they function uh, in a body of believers, but I also want to address the 21st century. Uh, I spoke last night a lot on the rise of the seeker-friendly church in America, a lot of the paradigms, a lot of the belief systems that I believe are primarily man-centered, going into cities and regions and surveying them, asking them what they want to hear, what will draw them to church, rather than doing it God's way, uh, as revealed even in the book of Acts. How many of you know when Paul and the apostles planted churches, there were either two outcomes, revival or riot? The gospel was either received and there was a demonstration of signs and wonders or they wanted to kill them. There was no mincing of words. So what I believe has happened in the 21st century is we've been infiltrated by a, by a type of seeker-friendly movement that places man at the center of the gospel. We begin to peddle the gospel. We begin to sell it to the highest bidder. We begin to water it down. We begin to make it more palatable, non-offendable. However we can package it, however we can get it into people's lives to help fit it in, rather than recognizing that Jesus is not a salt and pepper shaker that adds flavor to your life. He is the life. He is the way. He is the truth. I'm talking about the gospel as come and deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. All messages on identity, on purpose, on destiny. All of those messages apart from the cross of Jesus Christ is pure humanism. That's right. That's right. 
All messages on identity, destiny, and purpose outside the cross of Jesus Christ that bids us to come and die. All messages outside of the cross is pure humanism. So let's go to our brother Francis Chan, who I believe has weight to what he says. Because Francis Chan was a mega church pastor. He has openly confessed that he swallowed this seeker friendly church movement wholesale. His church grew to thousands of people. And as he was reading the gospel one day, he got this revelation. We have gathered a great crowd here of fans of Jesus, but we have no followers. His words. Take it from the guy who was involved in the movement. And so what he believed the Lord asked him to do was leave it all. And he left and he went on the mission field. He sold everything. And I believe that Francis Chan in the nation today is one of the strongest purest voices objectively of what the Lord wants to do. But listen to him. He says the benchmark of success in church services has become more about attendance than the movement of the Holy Spirit. The entertainment model of church was largely adopted in the 80s and 90s. And while it alleviated boredom for a few hours a week, it filled our churches with self-focused consumers rather than self-sacrificing servants of Jesus Christ. The entertainment model, it has alleviated boredom because we are now pushing performance. How many of you know the way that you get people to church is the way that you have to keep them in church? Yes. So if we're going to go down the hyper-marketing techniques, the ultra-man-centered, it's all about you, it's all about kids' church, it's all about what you can offer me, if you draw them with entertainment, you have to keep them with entertainment. It's more about a show. It's about a concert. In many of our Pentecostal charismatic environments, we're in love with worship, not God. That's right. That's right. And it has produced self-focused consumers. What's in it for me? What can you do for me in my life? Rather than preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ that comes and bids men to die. Yeah. To leave it all down at the altar that we could establish New Testament churches where we can welcome people and say, Welcome to Heart of the Father Ministry, a church where it's not about you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, brother, that's offensive. Oh, brother, that's the gospel. A promise I'll get to the Holy Spirit stuff, but what's happening is we are fighting current trends. We are fighting a spirit of an age that has infiltrated many of our churches. And what we want to do here in this ministry is we want to see the movement of the Holy Spirit married to the Word of God. We want to see the Word of God preached in power and authority. We don't want to substitute the Bible for any personality, any move of God. We believe any true move of God must be established on the Word. Amen. But we don't just want the Word. We believe that signs and wonders will confirm the Word. We just don't want the word preached. We want the presence and the power, the person of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is alive. You know what that means? That means you too. If he's alive, you're alive. And part of 
Jesus Christ coming alive in corporate community is every joint supplying. It's his life, his purpose, his gifts flowing through the body so that there is a full manifestation of all that he is. Yes. Oh, that's right. So I've been traveling the nation for the last eight years. I've probably preached in a little under 500 churches. I would say 90% of them have been assemblies of God. I've preached in mega churches, 10,000 member Pentecostal churches every year. I preach in small churches. I've stated this concern publicly. I've said it privately. I'm convinced that in many of our Pentecostal charismatic services, the only thing that's Pentecostal about it is the sign by the road. Now, you have to take in consideration that's from someone that preaches in them all the time. I'm not just some outsider taking a shot that doesn't know what I'm talking about. But I can tell you that what is happening in many of our Pentecostal charismatic services is we are being infiltrated by a seeker-friendly spirit that is ashamed of the Holy Spirit. We are afraid that if God moves outside of our box, people will leave. I've been challenged in our midweek Bible study on Wednesday. It's fantastic, by the way, and I encourage you to come here on Wednesdays. I've been challenged as we've been preaching James that faith without works is dead. If we say we believe in speaking in tongues, where is it? There's a difference between ordering a church service for when God moves Versus ordering a church service for if he moves. See, the thing is, when you talk to charismatic Pentecostals, they're not going to outright deny the Holy Spirit. What they're just going to say is, well, brother, we're open. If God wants to move here, well, he'll do it. I can just flat out tell you that clocks have killed more moves of God than demons ever have. I can just tell you the need to file people in and out of a church building in 45 minutes or less. The need to just run people through a drive through a little shot in the arm so we can get them out of here onto their life. The need to per perpetually drive people through a quote-unquote move of God is killing the move of God. And I want to declare to you, there will never be a true move of God without a mess. My heart is burning in this nation for something original, something authentic. I don't want cookie cutter. We are killing off creativity and divine strategy because all we want to do is mimic and parrot and click track and whatever the latest greatest is doing rather than how about someone get in a prayer closet rather than listen to another CD. Is there anyone out there that's willing to pay the price for the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit and that when people come into the kingdom of God, we're introducing them to the God-man, not a program. The role of church leaders is not to plug you into a program. It's to plug you into the God-man. It's to live out of an intimate encounter with Him where you can no longer override Him. Where we're living in such a place of His presence, there's truly pleasures forevermore. Where we hunger, where we thirst, where we desire, where we want to see a generation rocked by the Holy Spirit. Call me old school, but I'm telling you, a new thing is coming to the charismatic Pentecostal movement. It's called old school. Where we're actually going to preach Genesis to Revelation. There are not certain passages of Scripture 
There are not certain subjects like homosexuality and sexual immorality that we're not going to preach on. I would rather offend you now than see you in hell one day. We are not going to tone down the move of God. We want messages in tongues. We want prophecy. We want healing. We want miracles. We want it all. We're willing to pay any price. Whom are we trying to please? Paul said, if I was trying to please you, I wouldn't be preaching the gospel. That's good. That's There's good. two types of ministry. There's ministry to the house of God, and there's ministry to the God of the house. Anytime ministry to people becomes more important to ministry to God, we're living in idolatry. That's right. That's right. Oh, my heart longs for more vertical worship, more Davidic worship. You know, vertical worship where they just take you here. Vertical worship, it kills the entertainment spirit because the focus becomes God on the throne, not a worship leader on a stage. Yes. That's right, that's right. What, was, what, what, what happened? Is, what were they doing? Where was the words? They were in heaven. I've been to churches, they thought they had a move of God because worship was 30 minutes instead of 20 minutes. Saints, have we been with them? Have we allowed Him to pour His love and His affection upon us? Well, brother, the new wineskin, the new thing is, well, let's just get our kids in and out in 45 minutes. Well, let me ask you something. Why is something so new? Did people have kids back then? Yeah. Like, like the, I guess the new millennials, you know, church has to be real fast because my kids are just agitated. What did they do 30 years ago? Oh, 30 years ago, they brought sleeping bags to church. They actually spanked their kids. Come on! Oh, boy. Like 50, 60, and 70. Yeah. 
We have Jeremiah Johnson supporters all over the nation. Like 80% of them are 80 years old. Oh, brother, you remind me of Steve Hill. You remind me of Kilpatrick. I'm like, I praise God for the remnant. I praise God for the older generations. But honestly, I'm looking for some young people that are ready to say yes to Jesus that are more concerned with the anointing than how tight your jeans are. I can just tell you from preaching at the big conferences, a lot of these guys, the more concerned they are with their appearance, the way less anointed they are. And trust me, when they go overseas, their jokes don't work. Their dress can't move a crowd, but their prayer life can. So should we talk about the gifts? <laughs> I feel like what we do when we, you know, the reason why we don't teach on them is because you open up a can. Why should I teach on the gifts of the Holy Spirit if I want to control this atmosphere? <coughs> you know, it's just, you know, they know what they're doing. Church leaders know what they're doing. They're, they're not empowering. We're not training. We're not equipping because we want the microphone. We love platform ministry. The only anointed people in this church are those who stand on this platform. Now. What if an army rose, not a bunch of spectators? What if each and every member of the body stepped into the divine destiny? See, religion thrives on control. You want to make a religious person go nuts? Tell them God's doing something new. Hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> you want to make a pastor wig out, religious, take the clock off the wall? Right. That's right. That's right. I'm all for planning. I'm all for strategizing. I'm all for studying. But saints, the Holy Spirit was given to us. We're the possession of God. You were converted from a slave of sin to a slave of God. That's right. That's you were not converted as a slave to sin to, thank you very much, I'll do what I want now and call myself a Christian. I want unashamed, bold. A lot of my, my experience has been, you know, we're... we're Afraid to invite so and so to church because we think that they'll get offended and they're the very person that encounters God. Right. Remember a couple of years ago, probably several years ago, five years ago, I went to a, a restaurant with my wife over at Cheesecake Factory in Brandon. I've told this story before, and you know, we were coming up to that Easter service. You know, they call them priesters, you know, people that only show up for church on Christmas and, and Easter. And so, you know, typically there's this big thing among pastors and worship leaders because, you know, they're going to bring Betty Lou, Grandma, and, you know, we just, we need to water it down as, you know, seekers we can get it, make sure that, you know, no one's offended. And it's like the Lord gave me a word to invite uh, who we know is Tori Rasmussen. Uh, out in Tanzania, and, you know, back in the day, I don't know if he still is, but he was on Al-Qaeda's most wanted list. And I remember Tori, you know, this guy's altar calls are not, do you believe in Jesus? His altar calls are, are you ready to die for Jesus? And I feel like the Lord said, yeah, he's going to be your Easter speaker. And I thought, oh, Lord. <laughs> You know, if you've been around me any amount of time, which now it's kind of stopped because people know I'm not going to stop. But back in the day, people would write me letters like, please, Pastor, you know, tone it down on Easter. You know, don't don't say anything offensive. You know, can't you just read the Bible and pray for people? <laughs> so we invite Tori. He's coming over from Africa. My wife and I would go out to eat and show up at this restaurant. Sometimes this just happens with me where I just feel like the Lord sets this stuff up. We go and sit down at this table and this woman comes up and starts saying that she's a college student and that she's studying astrology and that, the, that she has a gift to read people. Before my wife could get a hold of me, I said, that's awesome. I have the same gift. <laughs> 
before morning, she was already kicking my shin. You know, I, I'm just, I'm waiting for this stuff. I, I, life in God changes so much when you realize He wants to move out there. I feel like a lot of times more than He wants to move in here. When any gas station, any grocery store, any conversation, you know, the word coincidence is not in the Hebrew. There, there's no such thing as randomness. There's no such thing as, well, I wonder why I met that person and I've been praying for him. Hello, open your mouth. <laughs> so I said, I have that gift too. And, you know, she took our drink order, came back, and, you know, before she even could get the food, I said, well, why don't you go first? <laughs> why don't you tell me what you see? So, you know, she's asking me my birthday, and, you know, all these questions, and has me pegged. And as she's talking, the Lord just gives me this vision of her being abused by her father at six years old. Wow. And all the pain, all the hurt, I mean, just this filled me with God's emotions, His heart for her. And I don't even know what she said. But I said, well, here, here's what my God showed me. And I share it with her instantly. I mean, it was one of those where she ran to the bathroom. I mean, we waited five minutes, ten minutes. The only thing I knew how to do was like leave a hundred dollar tip. <laughs> Didn't come back, left the car. Fast forward to Sunday, Easter Sunday, Tori's there. I remember it like yesterday, man. He's preaching on polycarp and being burned at the stake and he's sweating profusely and blood. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, we got Easter lunch, you know. And he's just going for it. And I remember I looked toward the back and this girl, Jennifer, from Cheesecake Factory, walked in the back in a white dress. When he gave that altar call, all I remember is she didn't walk, she ran down to the altar. And I was sitting there stunned. And I heard the voice of God say, Don't you ever again limit me to what I want to do in the world around you. Saints, I'm telling you, we are guilty of this. We are sometimes more afraid and more concerned that so and so are going to be offended by the tongues or the healing or the... And trust me, I get it. I just, you know, reached out to our neighbor. We moved in a new neighborhood and you know, just get to know him. And, and he's like, yeah, I went to this church in Lakeland and this woman next to me was like doing this gibberish thing and we were freaked out and left. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> so, you know, what's your church like? And I'm like... <laughs> you know, where can we sit in? You know? I said, no man, we're tongue talkers. I hate that. I, I, I hate that religious thing. I don't know if it's like people try to intimidate you. They try to like, oh, are you? Yes, I am. And I'm not ashamed of the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not here to hide anything. You need a deeper encounter with God. Do you struggle with temptation? You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you need to be praying in tongues for an hour every day. You don't know the will of God, good, read your Bible and let's prophesy. Yes. Well, I feel like the Lord is prodding, He's poking. I'm here this morning not to stroke you, but provoke you. Maybe I'm provoking the flesh, maybe I'm provoking demons, maybe Holy, hopefully it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but I just believe that the Lord is reaching into the charismatic Pentecostal church and saying, warning, in the last days, we will gather teachers to ourselves that will itch our ears. They will tell us exactly what we want to hear. They will be cookie cutter. It'll be mim mimicking, parroting. It'll make you feel comfortable. It'll all be about you warning. But also, 
good news in the last days God says I'm going to pour out my spirit the sons and daughters are going to prophesy men are going to have visions and people are going to have dreams so thank God for a last days outpouring that I believe he wants this community to inherit but we've got to recognize we're swimming upstream what we're doing here is not mainstream People come up and say, wow, brother, your church, you guys are like one of the most spiritual in Lakeland. I say, that's nice. I feel like we're like ankle deep. Like if you're impressed now, I'm like crying out saying, Lord, you've got to do something. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm wanting to see God use more of you. I'm hungry to see the gifts of God come alive. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, or probably a better translation would say, Now concerning spiritual matters, I do not want you to be unaware. Or it really should say, I don't want you to be ignorant. God does not want the church to be in the dark concerning the move of God. He does not want you unaware of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now look at verse 4. We'll pick up where we left off last week. Now there are varieties of gifts. Can you say variety? Do we have any creatives in here? Do we know that God makes every snowflake different? That there's not one snowflake the same. I love that life in God is full of variety. I believe in lots of the church, we have lost the Justin Beavers. We have lost many of the creatives who grew up in the move of God because we had no room for their variety. Why does it matter how God moves and when he moves so long as he moves? Listen, I'm not here preaching that it's not anointed unless it's three hours. I've been in a lot of extended services that were super unanointed. I'm not saying people are unanointed because they wear tight jeans and v-necks. I've met a lot of unanointed dudes wearing suits. Come on, let's slide a little bit. Big church, small, in the church, whatever. But we've got to give ourselves to not only knowing there's variety, but thanking God for it. Thank God that we all don't have to look like and act like and talk like. And if you do, you're probably a part of a cult. Oh, Lord, raise up the spiritual fathers and mothers in America where their sons and daughters don't look and act and talk like them. Amen. You can try to mimic my haircut if you want. <laughs> I am be somebody like Dave, great haircut. Yeah. Amen. You'd be like you. Amen. Variety. I don't know how many people we have in here, a few hundred. Variety. There are so many different gifts. There are so many different callings. There are so many different graces. Thank you, Lord. The problem, I believe, in a lot of these circles, the problem in the church is not gifting and talent. The problem is we're not creating the right environment for them to come forth. You know what it requires for the gifts to come forth? The Holy Spirit's presence. The Bible says in the last days, prophecy, dreams, and visions. Are you ready? In church communities where there are no visions, there are no dreams, where there's no prophesying, the Holy Spirit is being quenched. That's right. That's right. That's right. I ask people all the time, it's a scary thing to be around a group of people. God isn't speaking to anyone when they sleep. 
They're not having visions, their imagination, and no prophetic word of the Lord is coming forth. Now again, most of those things, they're spontaneous. It's the spontaneous, the unpredictable, the I can't put a hook on it, I can't control it. That's what scares people. That's right. But what the Lord wants to do in this hour is He just wants to be Himself. Imagine that. God is saying, I want my church back. God is saying, I've assembled a gathering of living stones. I've given you my life inside of me. And if you're going to shout, Jesus is alive, you've got to know you're supposed to be alive too. Amen. 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 Thank you for variety, Lord. And there are varieties of ministries in the same Lord. And there are varieties of effects. If you're taking notes real quickly. Really cool language here. Now there are variety of effects. Effects means this. The energy of God in believers. There's even variety of the energy of God. Dustin Whitney. There are varieties of energy in people that supernaturally stir them. Are there any tiggers in here? Boing, 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 boing. Listen, the Lord has put His Spirit inside of people as a catalyst. You get around them. Hey, Enrico. He's got that. Listen, I'm telling you, it's not just, oh, hey, praise the Lord. I'm telling you, this brother operates in the effects of the Spirit. There's supernatural energy in him where you get excited. Has anybody ever been around Lou Engel? I think that brother got like a quadruple anointing of the effects of God. This guy is like the great on the prayer. He's the rocker. I, I've been with him many hours, many days. You, there's no way you can. I don't even care if you're like not born again. There's no way you can get around this brother and not get supernaturally energized by the Holy Spirit and shift into what he's called you to do. So here's my encouragement to some of you today. Stop hiding the energy. When are you going to get out of your seat and come here and dance? Because your dance could be someone else's deliverance. Oh, brother. That was a spiritual gift. Saints, do we realize life and creativity in God? He created the moon, the stars, the land. I mean, how great, how big is our God? I don't want to limit Him because I have somewhere to go. I want to get to the place like Peter where he says, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. Where else shall we go? That's right. There's varieties. There's energy. But the same God who works in only anointed people with Bible degrees. <laughs> oh, so, you guys are out. Unless you come to Maranatha, you can't ever prophesy. Yeah. <laughs> and every person who names the name of Jesus, in all persons, in all things, there's not some super de duper special portal that I jump in every morning to get the word of the Lord for you. I have to read the Bible and I have to pray just like you to connect with God. We in the church have elevated this platform and I'm prophesying to you that the next move of God coming to the charismatic Pentecostal church will have nothing to do with the platform. It will have everything to do with mothering and fathering. Multiple generations walking together in one accord honoring what one another carry so that the young folks will honor the wisdom of the older generations and the older generations will honor the zeal and passion of the young. Yeah. 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 So I keep running into all these lesbians. Hear their story, cry with them. Why did you go down that path? 
It's like a broken record. I was at the church, I was gifted, and I didn't fit in. I mean, I wonder how many LGBT, gay, I mean, what, how many of these folks have ended up gifted serving the wrong guy out there because we couldn't welcome them in here. Now again, the gospel has to be foundational. You guys know me, you know us here. I get all that. But I'm saying we can seriously, in this church and in the Pentecostal charismatic church, get over our religious spirit. I will, brother. Lock the door, Troy. Verse 7. But to each one, can you say each one? Each one. Listen, let me just speak the Father's heart over you. There's not one person in this room that's unqualified. There's not one person in this room. If you name the name of Jesus, if you've been born again, there are gifts of the Holy Spirit that God has given you, and you were born for more than nine to five in retirement. At some place, at some time, the Lion of Judah wants to roar through you. Moms, he wants to use you to roar to your kids. Dads, he wants to use you to roar over your homes. Something that we can do. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. If you're taking notes, write this down. I just, I love the original language. It says, but to each one the manifestation, or to each one is given the manifestation. This word given, but to each one is given... It means a continual and a constant flow. Yes. But to each one is given a continual and a constant flow of the Holy Spirit. You leave church today and you go to work tomorrow and you wake up and you walk in your office at 10 a.m. with bad breath because you forgot to brush your teeth and you meet a co-worker who starts spilling her guts. You don't have to run in the bathroom and put on your Wonder Woman coat. You don't have to run and go get the Superman coat. You can be assured there is a constant and there is a continual flow of the Holy Spirit that's aimed at you on all occasions. And all you have to do is yield and receive and say, oh, God, use me to be your ambassador. We've got to get beyond, oh, Lord, come. That's why you're there. These days of old pastor come to the hospital. Billy's sick. How about you go? Amen. Amen. Well, we need to go get the anointed guy. The same anointing that's resting on them is in you because you have the Holy Ghost. You have. Brother, if you want a real word from God, you better give me 40 bucks. <laughs> well, if you want that next greatest, latest anointing, you better sign up for the fall conference. Just remain miserable, broken, hurting. You know, just wait till September 23rd. Your breakthrough will come. Just come down to the altar. Get that impartation from that really anointed God. Well, I really need a spiritual father. I really mean I need to connect to somebody famous. Meanwhile, I'm going to overlook the spiritual father and mother sitting right in front of me in the row ahead. A constant and continual flow of the manifestation the varying degree 
and display of the Holy Spirit. Here's how it reads in the Greek. But to each one is given a constant and a continual flow of the varying degree and display of the Holy Spirit for the common good. Here's a great prayer to pray. God, put your spirit on display through me. Like, I want to be a fiery inferno tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I don't want to run away from people in wheelchairs. I want to run to them. I don't want to try to get away from depressed people. I want to run to them because I know who holds the keys to their depression. Amen. I'm talking about a victorious, triumphant saints who have tapped into the gifting, the variety, the diversity, the constant, the continual flow. In some ways, this breaks me because I'm like, Lord, how much of what you wanted to pour out today here did you? That old entertainment model of church caused us to walk in here and just listen to some guy or some worship leader. What happens if you have something to offer someone here? What if you made it your goal to never come to a church service again unless you prayed for someone? God move. Go ahead. You go. Lord, there's a lot of people here that are hungry, they're starving. Oh, what do you have? Saints, what has he given you? Good. Verse 8, for to one is given the word of wisdom. We're going to look at 9 here real quickly. I don't have a watch and we don't have a clock, so you're in trouble. <laughs> for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, Another gifts of healing. Notice the plural there. Not gift of healing. Gifts of healing. A lot of people miss that. Wait a minute, brother. You're telling me that there's even variety in healing? That you have anointed some to heal the deaf? Where someone might have an anointing to heal the blind? Gifts. Plural. And another, the effecting of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the distinguishing of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. God is the divine distributor of His gifts. But what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit for exactly? We've read that they're for the common good. But let's look at what Matthew Henry says here and we'll land the plane. He said the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not distributed for the advantage of those who have them but for the benefit of the church. Yes. This is why you can't have prophets and prophetic people saying, well, brother, I have a gift, but I don't need to go to church. No, your gifts were given not for you, but for a body. Whatever gifts God gives to anyone, He gives them so that those who have them may do good with them. Gifts are a trust put into the hands of mankind, given not for show, but for service. You know what we've done in the charismatic Pentecostal circles? We have turned the gifts of the Holy Spirit to a circus. That's right. That's right. I'll be, I'll be honest. I tell people all the time, I'm like a Baptocostal. Honestly, I'm still trying to figure out fire tunnels. I'm trying to figure out half of this charismania stuff we do. I'm like, how is that helping anyone be conformed to the image and likeness of Jesus Christ? All right. 
People are falling on the floor, being slain in the spirit all the time. Listen, if you keep falling on the floor and you can't take it out the door, stop falling on the floor. Amen. Oh, I want you to hear me. We're, we're not about goofy, quacky, fleshly move of the Holy Ghost here. I can tell you that's never going to happen because we're actually going to preach this. Right. Amen. I got everybody's attention now. <laughs> but we've turned it into a show, a charade, a circus. What the Lord wants to do is he wants to restore the gifts. He wants to restore the movement of the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to tell you, misuse doesn't mean no use. Majority of the millennials that I know that don't want to move of God or, or reject it is because their parents were a part of one. Well, if that means I gotta be in church nine days a week and there's only seven, I'm out. If that means I gotta be a bunch of, around a bunch of fake people who operate in miracles and cheat on their wife. Listen, I'm telling you, God is raising up a generation of ministers who will have character that matches anointing. They will not be goofy, quacky, wacky. The power of their ministry will be found in their marriage. Yes. 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 We, I'm telling you, do not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Yes, we're in Lakeland. What does that mean? I call them the black sheep of Lakeland. There are so many people in this city, in this county, that have been hurt and burned by past moves of God and want nothing to do with it. But that doesn't mean I believe that we're supposed to say, well, brother, God's doing a new thing. Forget all that. I'm saying, no, let's redig the wells of revival that were built here. And let's ask God to cleanse and purify and purge anything that doesn't need to be there. And Lord, raise up a movement in Lakeland that marries the word of God to the movement of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Lots of different gifts, prophecy, tongues, faith, miracles, interpretation. I ask pastors all the time, where is it? I mean, and I've had those awkward conversations, trust me. A couple thousand Member of Sons of God Mega Church. I preached that earlier this year. Guy had three doctorates. I mean, doesn't get any more intelligent than this brother. I said, brother, you're like, you know, the AG district guy in all the Midwest. And I said, I've been coming to this church three years. And what I sense on the people is that they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. Now, be it most of these guys bring me in and they ask me, tell me exactly what you think, because that's me. Another guy brought me in last year, you know, five services on a Sunday, said, tell me what you think. I didn't even preach. I just walked around. I said, man, A plus in excellence, great song service. I mean, you know, paying the worship leader a hundred grand a year. I mean... Programs. I mean, you, you, the building's beautiful. But I said, but in terms of the anointing of the Holy Spirit being here, zero. I didn't feel God in here at all. The preaching was unanointed. I said, the worship leader hit every note, but I don't think he has a prayer life. And here's what they tell me continually. Well, brother, we got to pay our bills. You know how much our mortgages, how much our salaries are? I, I want to tell you, I mean, I know it amazes people. I'm telling you, a lot of our Pentecostal charismatic services, the Holy Ghost is not being allowed to move because we have to pay the salaries. We have to pay the mortgages. We have to keep people happy. So they warn me. They warn others. Brother, if you keep preaching that holiness stuff, that repentance stuff, if you keep confronting, you're going to be poor your whole life. 
I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Yes. Brother, if you keep preaching that, you're going to have a small church. No, God is going to raise up a remnant of ravens that are going to, that are going to fund end time Elijah's. Did you hear me? God is going to raise up a remnant of ravens of people who will actually fund the truth. They will want to be in environments where just tell me the truth. Just let God move and we'll pick up the pieces when it's over. So I'm believing for bold confrontational messengers that will arise in the spirit of Elijah that will turn hearts of fathers back to sons and mothers and daughters. And I'm believing for saints, for marketplace people that God would pour out wealth in their hands and they would help us legislate change in a city. Listen, we need all the gifts. You know, without money, we can't have a dream realized for raising up of end time messengers. That if the Lord doesn't give people the gift of finance, we can't do it. Thank God this church isn't made up of all prophets. Nothing would ever get done. Everybody would just be declaring things and no one would be doing anything. Thank God for people with gifts of hospitality and service. So that when people have babies and people are in the hospital, there's people ready, available. There's room for everybody. There's room for everybody. There's a loss. There's a dying world that's out there. And I just want to close today by praying and asking God to stir up His Spirit in you. To stir up His Spirit in this body corporately. And that Jesus Christ would truly come alive in our midst. But the first thing I want to pray for is that the fear of man would be broken off our lives. I look at so many people through the lens of the prophetic. The Lord shows me their destiny, their future. So many great and powerful things. And yet I say to the Lord, but if they don't get the fear of man broken off of their life, they'll never fulfill their destiny. It's a, it's a hard thing to describe to you what I see down the corridor of time in people's lives. But yet there's this fear of man that if they don't break the fear of man, they'll never come into their destiny. So I want that off me. How do you break the fear of man off somebody? You just have to say, Lord, I want to live to please you more than I please any man. And then I'll test you. Having the fear of man broken off of your life is more than praying a prayer. That prayer that you're praying is basically saying, Lord, send me into a confrontation. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth. Listen, thank God for Facebook. But we have a lot of people, all they've got is a keyboard anointing. It doesn't take any guts to type something on Facebook. It takes guts to get up and preach. Yes. The most bold people I know on the internet are some of the most wimpy people I've ever met on the face of the earth in person. Lord, make me bold as a lion. And again, the goal is not to intentionally offend people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, Lord, if you're wanting to move, you're wanting to say something to that waitress. I'm open. I'm willing. I'm available. I'm going to take the step. What's the worst thing that they can happen? I think about all the time, like, they'll kill you in China, but over here all they do is think you're a weirdo. Praise God. <laughs> it's okay to miss it. We're talking with Allison and the worship team. I just believe God is doing something new in the worship realm at Heart of the Father. 
And there's going to be times in our services where you're like, what in the world are they doing? I don't know. We're just flowing with the Holy Ghost and seeing what He wants to do. Brother, what are you doing? I don't know. I'm just waiting on God. I'm here to give you permission by the Holy Spirit. You don't always have to have every T crossed and I got it. Mom, God might want you to have a family over and the house is not as clean as you want it. Oh, brother, I'm not ready. Sorry. A constant and continual flow of the Holy Ghost is in you. He loves us. You were born for so much more. You have supernatural DNA woven on the inside of you. Amen. The Lord's ready. How many people want to see this city touch for Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Want to see revival in this nation? Yeah. And listen to that song by Jake Hamilton with our kids. Uh, Anthem. You know, Bella and Israel, my four and six year old, they you know, shout from the back seat, I am royalty. I Amen. have destiny. Amen. Amen. I, I get choked up every time they're just That's right. That's right. Like I look in the rearview mirror and they're like, don't even know what they're saying and like, you know, missing the notes. I'm like, come on, God. Amen. I don't want to limit them. Lord, I, I don't I don't want to be that hindrance. Like that scares me, Lord, that I would ever cut off what you wanted to do in someone else's life because I didn't have time. So let's pray this morning. Would you grab the hand of the person next to you? I guess that was prophetic <laughs> ramblings part three. <laughs> let's just begin to thank him all over this room. We're just praying here, just sitting with Him. I just want you to focus on Him. We've been made the dwelling place of God. Let your heart be full of awe and wonder. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, we're hungry for more of you. God, that you would flow in us and through us. Lord, in a world that's so full of problems, Lord, I pray that we would be people of solutions. What the Lord is even saying to some of us in this room, I feel like this could be for some parents. You're offended because your kids have been offended by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I just feel like the Lord is even saying to some parents, I'm releasing you on an assignment to begin to pray for the fullness of the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon your children. To begin to cry out that the same way that you have experienced and tasted the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that they would begin to speak in tongues. Like there are people in this room that have been a part of a past move of God, that have been around the gifts, and it just put a bitter taste in your mouth. You said, no, I don't want that. Believe that the Lord is awakening something in you. He's stirring your heart. we begin now just to break the fear of man off of every heart. I hear God saying that there are gifts that have been killed off in this room that are about to be resurrected from the dead. 